One of the most controversial periods in Australia's legal and political history was the dismissal of God Whitlam's government in 1975. Well, may we say, God save the Queen. Because nothing will save the Governor General. The Governor General dismissed the Prime Minister calling for new elections and establishing a caretaker prime minister to guarantee the supply for the government of that year. What were the constitutional provisions and conventions that led to that situation? Hello everyone, my name is Renato Costa, this is Ozilo, and today we will learn more about the constitutional crisis of 1975. To fully understand what happened in 1975, we need first to remember some things that we have already mentioned in some of our previous videos. Let's start by remembering that Goth Whitlam's government was the first Labour government to come into power after more than two decades of coalition government in Australia. And that he won the general elections for the House of Representatives in 1972, but he did not manage to get the majority in the Senate. As you know, the Senate and the House of Representatives are basically equal in power and status. The distinction between the two is expressed in Section 53 of the Constitution. A bill appropriating monies and imposing taxation cannot be originated in the Senate, and the Senate cannot amend those money bills, but they can propose amendments to the House of Representatives. But if the Senate proposes an amendment that the House of Representatives does not agree to, that can instantiate the mechanism that we find in section 57, the double dissolution. This means that ultimately the Senate can even bring down a whole government that has the confidence of the House of Representatives. And that's what happened in 1974. In 1974, the Senate was rejecting a lot of bills that had been proposed by Whitlam's government. And I mean a lot. There was, for example, this supply bill being voted in the Senate that was called the Appropriation Bill No. 4. And with it, there were some other six bills that were rejected by the Senate. These six bills were rejected twice. And do you remember what happens? Exactly, there was a deadlock and so they activate Section 57. And since they had been rejected twice, that meant that the two houses could be dissolved by the Governor General. However, Whitlam still attempted to pass the supply bill, the Appropriation Bill No. 4. But when he saw that that Appropriation Bill No. 4 was about to be rejected by the Senate as well, he decided to use Section 57 and actually during the second reading of that Appropriation Bill it was announced that the Governor General had followed the advice of the Prime Minister and had ordered the double dissolution of Parliament. Since the Senate had already rejected those six bills, independently of the supply bill, then it was possible for Whitlam to ask for the Governor-General to use the powers of Section 57 to promote a double dissolution of the Commonwealth Parliament. And of course, by doing that, he was expecting to win the majority in the Senate, as well as in the House of Representatives, to guarantee the passage of those bills and also the passage of the supply bill. But that did not happen. In the elections of 1974, Whitlam again had a low margin, a narrow majority in the House of Representatives, but failed to have the majority in the Senate. On the first two days after the new parliament convened, the House of Representatives passed those six bills again, and the Senate once again rejected them. In August 1974 then, we had the one and only joint sitting to ever occur in Australia. The six bills were presented once again without amendments and the government managed to approve them by an absolute majority, although a narrow one. There's a lot of controversy related to the processes involved in section 57 and particularly in the approval of the bills in the joint sitting. So in our next videos, we will talk about some of the cases related to it. As you know, if you want to make sure that you are not going to miss those videos, you have to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon. 
And if you want to engage more with our Aussie Law community, you can also join our channel and become a member. These events of 1974 show how the Senate is actually a powerful house in the federal parliament. Although it did not bring down Whitlam's government per se, the Senate exerted such a political pressure that forced the government to call for double dissolution and for new elections. And ultimately, that led to a joint sitting where the bills were only approved by a narrow absolute majority. But we are not quite yet at the constitutional crisis. And that came after some decisions made by Whitlam. I'm not sure why he'd made these decisions. Maybe he thought that all the things that happened had been in the past and they weren't going to influence him again. But the decisions that he made after that date, after the joint sitting, they cost him a lot. In February 1975, Whitlam appointed a senator, a Labour senator, to become a justice of the High Court. But the problem was that that AOP senator was replaced by an independent. And the situation got even worse when another senator passed away and was replaced by someone who opposed Whitlam's government. These changes shifted completely the balance of the Senate. When the Budget Bill of 1975 was presented before the Senate for approval, the Senate, under the guidance of the MP and Liberal Party leader Malcolm Fraser, decided not to reject it until Whitlam called for new elections. The situation then was the following. Whitlam had the majority in the lower house, the House of Representatives, and formed the government. But he did not have the majority in the Senate. The majority in the Senate was on the government's opposition, led by Malcolm Fraser. And so the Budgetary Appropriation Bill of 1975 was being stalled in the Senate until Whitlam, who formed the government, called for new elections. But Whitlam decided to arm wrestle the Senate and not call the new elections. See what's happening? This is a crisis. This is a real crisis. The government cannot function without the money that must be approved by the Senate and the Senate is stalling to approve the budget because they want the government out. Whitlam, on the one side, was saying that the Senate should respect the Constitutional Convention and approve the budget. But Malcolm Fraser, on the other side, was supporting the Senate and saying that no Constitutional Convention existed to that effect. Well, since the Senate was taking too long to approve that bill, Whitlam decided to approve a new appropriation bill in the House of Representatives, to which the Senate once more deferred action. For the third time then, he attempted to have an appropriation bill examined by the Senate, but once again, he failed. So what can be done? How can we get out of this conundrum? By an unprecedented move, the Governor General of the Commonwealth, Sir John Kerr, decided to exercise his reserve powers and dismiss the government of the day. That's right. Even though Whitlam had the majority in the House of Representatives, the lower house to which he is responsible, according to the principle of responsible government, he was dismissed. And even though the principle of responsible government dictates that the Governor General should always act on the advice of elected ministers, so John Kerr decided to exercise his reserve powers not following the advice of the Prime Minister and therefore dismissing the government of the day. In replacement of Whitlam, he put Malcolm Fraser, the leader of the opposition, as the caretaker Prime Minister to make sure that the supply bill was going to be approved in the Senate. The period between the 16th of October, when there was the deferral of the appropriation bill, in 11 November 1975, when there was the dismissal of the Whitlam government, is known as the Constitutional Crisis of 75. When the appropriation bill was approved by the Senate, the caretaker Prime Minister advised the Governor General to dissolve both Houses of Parliament and call for new general elections. He did that because there were some other 21 bills that had already been rejected twice by the Senate and that had been stockpiled by the House of Representatives and therefore they could instantiate the process of Section 57. 
The governor general of course followed the advice and then new general elections occurred once more in 1975. In justifying his decision to dismiss Whitlam's government, the governor general argued that in the Australian system the confidence of both houses on supply is necessary to ensure its provision. Basically, he was saying that the power of the Senate to block supply entailed that the government that had been denied supply by parliament should resign and call for new elections. This for him was a consequence of parliamentary control of appropriation and expenditure. Thus, since Whitlam's government failed to guarantee supply and failed to resign as a consequence of it, he was still supposed to go through and face new general elections. The result of the December 1975 election was an overwhelming majority for the coalition in the House of Representatives and a solid majority for them in the Senate as well. But look, the events of 1975 are still controversial. We'll talk about some of these controversies in my next videos when we discuss some of the cases that came out of the double dissolution in the joint seating. And also those related to some questions about the powers of the Senate and the possibility of the Governor General not following the advice of elected ministers. But for now, I hope you understood the circumstances surrounding the constitutional crisis of 1975 and also the legal aspects related to that crisis. If you did understand, then leave the like button and also subscribe to our channel because that way I'll make sure that I'll see you again next time. Until then, ciao.